Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to present exercises on different subjects. It is important for you to know that this is a three part video. This is the third part, the last part. Within the three videos, there were presented 15 different exercises, five exercises on each one. Right now, the screen is showing the exercises that were presented in part one. Now it is showing the exercises that were presented in part two. And now it is showing the exercises that are going to be presented in part three. Throughout the video, at any point, if you want to try an exercise on your own, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, feel free to pass the video at that moment. And also, if you want to uh, share comments, share your solution, uh, feel free to do so down in the comments. Also, if you just want to see a certain proof and relax watching it or compare for other reasons, uh, continue watching each of the proofs of these exercises. So starting with exercise 11, let A and X be sets. Then X without A, intersection A is equal to the empty set. And X without A, union X intersection A is equal to X. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to try this exercise on your own, I feel free to try it. Otherwise, I also feel free to continue watching the video. So for beginning the proof, the first part is an equality of sets and it is going to be proven by equivalences. So starting S is in X without A intersection A. Using the definition of intersection, this is if and only if S is in X without A and S is in A. Now using the definition of difference of sets, this is if and only if S is in X and S is not in A and S is in A. At this moment, it is useful to use the associativity of conjunction. So this is going to be if and only if S is in X and S is not in A and S is in A. It is important to notice that this last term is made up of S is not in A and S is in A. One is the negation of the other, so they cannot be true at the same time and they are inside that conjunction. So the conjunction is always false. This is a logical contradiction. This is inside of a conjunction, so this entire expression is false. Because this entire expression is false, it can imply anything. Something that is useful right now to imply is that S is in the empty set. Moreover, S in the empty set, because of the definition of the empty set, is a logical contradiction. This is always false because S is not in the empty set, always. And again, because this is a logical contradiction, it is always false. We can imply anything from this. It's something that is very useful. It's just to imply this statement that we have above. So we can go back. At this moment, we have an argument that is connected by equivalences that starts with S in a set and ends with S in another set. Therefore, by definition of equality of sets, these two sets are equal. Moving on to part number two, and now it is asked to be proved the equality of sets X without A, union X intersection A equals X. So again, this is going to be done by equivalences. So S in X without A, union X intersection A. By the definition of union, this is if and only if S is in X without A or S is in X intersection A. Now we can use the definition of difference of set and intersection of sets. So this gives S is in X and S is not in A, or S is in X and S is in A. Now here comes a somewhat tricky step because we are going to use a common property distribution of conjunction. However, it is going to be used backwards as it is often used. So, uh, just watch what is showing right now on the screen. Uh, I'm sure you can figure it out. It's just that the distribution is doing backwards. So this, the last statement that has been shown, S is in X and S is not in A or S is in A. If we distribute the X, S in X to that disjunction, we get the expression that is above. So we are just using distribution of conjunction backwards. 
At this moment, we can use simplification. We just get one of the terms of the conjunction, that being that S is in X. Moreover, we want to go back in the arguments. So it is important to notice that we have S is not in A or S is in A. This is the negation of one of the other, but right now we have a disjunction. This is pretty much always true. This is the principle of the excluded middle. And because this is always true, we can always join it into a conjunction. So that gives us the backwards argument. So we can go back. And right now, again, we have an argument uh, connected by equivalences that starts with S in a set and ends with S in another set. So those two sets must be equal. This would be it for the second part, and this would be it for the exercise 11. So, okay, moving on to exercise number 12, let A and B be sets, then A intersection B is equal to the empty set, if and only if A without B is equal to A, and if and only if B without A is equal to B. So, uh, give it a try if you want to. And okay. So, in order to start this exercise, it is important to notice that we are being asked to prove a three-part equivalence. Yeah. This is a little bit tricky uh, because it has a couple of steps. However, I recommend to start just with the following. Uh, let A and B be sets. If A intersection B equals the empty set, then A without B is equal to A. And if A without B is equal to A, then A intersection B is equal to the empty set. These two are implications that come from the breakup of the first equivalence. So if we prove these two, we will have only proven the first equivalence. There would be other two equivalents remaining, that being the first term with the third and the second with the third. But okay, starting with part one, uh, the first one would be proven by suppose that A intersection B is equal to the empty set. Now it is important or required to prove that A without B is equal to A. So this is going to be by using exercise 11. Uh, by exercise 11, it is known that A without B union A intersection B is equal to A. And this is exercise 11. And an exercise with the empty set, it gives that union with the empty set just gives the, the same set. So A without B equal to A without B union the empty set. Thanks to our supposition that A intersection B is the empty set and just replacing by equalities, then A without B is equal to A. This is just using a substitution of the equalities. So this would be the first implication. So now for the second implication, I suppose A without B is equal to A. And again, it is going to be used exercise 11, but the other part that, that A without B intersection B is equal to the empty set. Now just replacing that A without B is equal to A gives the desired result then A intersection B is equal to the empty set. This is just a property of equality substitution. Okay, this will have proven part one. However, we'll have a couple of equivalences remaining. But for the general case, uh, pretty much we are just going to change them all up. So starting with the second term of the equivalences, A without B, equals A, if and only if A intersection B is equal to the empty set. This is due to part one. And now due to an exercise of intersection of sets, this is if and only if B intersection A is equal to the empty set. This is just because A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. And now thanks to part one, we have again that this is if and only if B without A is equal to B. Now we have four terms that are equivalent to each other. And this is going to 
by syllogisms be able to take any of two, those two terms at will and they are going to be equivalent. So this gives already the equivalence of the three terms that we need for ending this proof. And this is just due to the syllogism. We can take any two terms within the change and they are going to be equivalent. Okay, moving on to exercise 13, net A and B B sets, then A union B without A intersection B is equal to A without B union B without A. This is an interesting exercise. This is very common on courses. So just let, get started with this one. Okay, so we are going to go for a cut proof. Uh, just starting with exercise seven, we are able to distribute the difference. So this is going to be equal to A without A intersection B, union B without A intersection B. Now, just for preparing everything, uh, let's commute intersection in the second term. Uh, that is going to be A without A intersection B, union B without B intersection A. And just closing everything with exercise number two. And we are done. So, okay, let's move to exercise 14. Let A, B, and C be sets. Then A without B and without C is equal to A without C without B. Okay. This is an equality of sets. So, just as always, we start with S in A without B without C. This is going to be approved by equivalences. So, using the definition of difference of sets, it is given that S is in A without B and S is not in C. And again, using the definition of difference of sets, S is in A and S is not in B and S is not in C. So we use uh, associativity. There are going to be a couple of steps just to have everything done correctly. So associativity of conjunction gives that S is in A and S is not in B and S is not in C. Just doing more steps than necessary, but just showing all of the steps. Now it is possible to commute the terms in the second conjunction. So commutative conjunction, S is in A and S is not in C and S is not in B. And we just use associativity again. And this is already giving us pretty much what we want. We use the definition of difference. So S is in A and not in C. And again, we use the definition of difference. So S is in A and not in C without B. This already gives an argument connected by equivalence where S was in one set and then it is in another. So those sets must be equal due to the definition of equality of sets. We are done for exercise 14. So exercise 15 and the last one in this series not only for this video, but for this series. Let A, B, and C be sets. Then A without the difference of B and C is equal to A without B union A intersection C. So if you want to give it a try, feel free to do so, or you can continue watching this proof. So it is an equality of sets. It is going to be proven by equivalences. S in A without the difference of B and C. So by definition of difference of set, this is S is in A and S is not in B without C. Again, uh, this time we are going to use the definition of not in. So just pulling the not outside of everything. So S is in A and not S in B without C. And now we can use the definition of difference. S is in A and not S in B and S not in C. And at this moment, it is going to be used the negation of conjunction, the Morgan law. So S is in A and S is not in B or S is in C. And at this moment, it is possible to use the distribution of conjunction. So S is in A and S is not in B or S is in A and S is in C. And at this moment, it is possible to use uh, the definition of difference of sets and of intersection. Just 
first definition of difference, S is in A little B, or definition of intersection, S is in A intersection C. And now just using the definition of union, S is in A without B, union A intersection C. We have already an argument connected by equivalences, where S is in one set, and then it is in another set, so those two sets must be equal. And that gives the equality that we want. This is the end of the proof. This is the end of the series of 15 exercises. Let me know if you like the video. Also, you can leave me questions and comments if you want me to treat a certain topic in which you are interested. Let me know. Thanks for watching.